The Message Talk Show is back. We're back today, Thursday, the 4th <laughs> of June. Guess what we have? Guess who we have in the house? We have in the house an amazing person. An amazing person in the house. I won't even tell you her name just yet, but this lady is so amazing that when you hear her, you're going to go, wow, wow. <laughs> I met this lady about four years ago, I think, four years ago at a Best You conference. And I turned around and I heard this voice. And I thought, who is this voice? I turned around and I heard this voice speaking and I thought, my, what confidence. This is amazing. I went over, took out my phone and I said, can I interview you on my phone? And I took out my mobile phone and interviewed this lady. And you'd be amazed what came out of her mouth. Now, <laughs> let me just show you a clip of what came out of her mouth when I first met this lady. Now, listen to this. I'm an international motivational speaker at 10 years of age. That's amazing. I, I, I just found that so powerful when I first spoke to you, Vanessa. Vanessa, how are you today? I'm very good, thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me onto the show. I'm very, very excited. <laughs> the, ple the pleasure is mine just having you on the show today. The pleasure is all mine because, you know, when you started posting that you're excited about being on the show, I thought, my God, I'm excited too. <laughs> and my, 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 my adrenaline just kept running and running. When I got up today, I was so nervous, thinking, my God, I've got to be like Uka, the youngest in the country on, on the show. Those of you listening on Facebook, press the share button, press the like button. Those of you listening on YouTube, press the share and press subscribe. Subscribe and share. And those of you listening on LinkedIn, press the like button and press the share button. So that's your job for today. Get yourself a cup of water, put all the distractions away, and get ready for the youngest motivational speaker in the country. So let's give you one of the clips now. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have in the house this amazing motivational speaker all the way from London. Ladies and gentlemen, just welcome to the platform, Inspiring Vanessa! <laughs> Vanessa, so who are you, Vanessa? Who are you? I, th I thought you already knew, Alex. That's fine. I'll introduce well, myself. <laughs> I'll introduce myself to those who don't like, know me. I to hear from you. Um, so I'm 13 years old. I am inspiring Vanessa, as was probably stated um, a few times. And I'm an international multi award winning motivational speaker. I'm also a presenter, a YouTuber, a model, and also an author, and a podcast host, or just a host in general, you can say. 
but yeah I do many different things and I've been doing motivational speaking or like social media and my career um, for four years now so I started when I was nine years old and I believe when I was 10 I spoke at the Best You Expo and that's when I well that's the first time I spoke there and then I met Alex amazing amazing but what 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 got you started speaking because you know it, it's, it's most unusual to find probably what you said you started when you're about nine at nine years of yeah. age, such confidence just to stand there and speak to 20 30 50 100 people what got you what got you started um, what got me started is a very, I think it's one of the most common questions I get asked, other than how do you deal with schoolwork and speaking? I think those are like the main questions I get asked um, in any event I go to. So it all basically started when I attended an inspirational seminar, or inspirational event, and because my mum had started her personal development journey. So that's when we kind of started to attend more events that just was all about positive thinking, the mindset, everything like that. Um, so when I went to the event, it was like kind of based around like parents and their kids. So it was really eye-opening for me to see many entrepreneurs at the event. And then there was like some YouTubers there who were younger than me and I was nine years old. So for me to kind of see that, especially when I would be in primary school and hearing about what standard jobs there would be, and for me to kind of go to an event and see, wow, you can be a motivational speaker and you can travel yeah. around the world and help people or you can be an entrepreneur and be your own boss kind of thing. So for me to kind of see that at nine years old, I think was a massive like perspective change. So I think just being able to hear about different things like that really kind of made me more passionate about it. Um, so one of the speakers um, at the event, we were following him on social media at the time. Of course, it's on social media, um, but we met him at the event and I think like maybe five or two minutes before he went on stage, he was like, Vanessa, would you like to come on stage with me? And initially my first reaction was definitely no. And I say <laughs> that <laughs> I say that um, confidently, but I also say that um, honestly as well, it's simply because like my confidence wasn't where it was, like where it is now. Um, my confidence has grown so much probably due to public speaking. It's kind of like the main way you can kind of put yourself out there. So. Um, I kind of got those encouraging words from my mum, kind of brought myself together and said, it's only going to be 30 seconds. It's not a TED talk. Nobody's asking you to stand there for half an hour and do a full on, full blown speech. So I went on stage to some affirmations like, dream big, follow your heart. Those kind of words you see on like Instagram, Instagram posts or Tumblr posts, whatever it is. So I said that for like 30 seconds. I was literally like running off the stage afterwards i did not want to be seen by anybody didn't want to hear any feedback because i knew it was going to be bad um but afterwards when i, I think i was going to the bathroom or something and then when i was walking out a couple of kids came up to me and they're like your little speech was really good and i was like wait <laughs> wait a minute how is me kind of doing a completely like unprepared speech going to be helping someone and for me, I've always had a massive passion for helping people. That's what I find kind of my happiness in a way. Me helping people makes me happy. Me making other people wow. happy brings me happiness. But then when I was younger, I always knew that I did not like science. I did not like anything to do with blood. So I already knew that me being a doctor was not going to be something I would be accomplishing or achieving. So it feels like, or it felt like I was always trying to find something. Something was missing. Um, so wow. Then when I finally discovered speaking, it was like, I can travel, which I love to travel. Me and my mom love to discover new places. I can help people and I can also talk. <laughs> and I can do that as a job. And I was always the chatter box. I was always that outgoing, introverted kind of girl in the class. Like, if I didn't know you, you probably wouldn't realize I'm there. But if I'm like your best friend, I'll be like screaming from the rooftops kind of thing. So, I think my first so, kind of discovered it and realised that that was kind of the beginning so you're of. Speaking, that. You're speaking quite a few venues, quite a few events across across London, across the country, and so tell me how you really feel when you how you really feel those few minutes before when you go on stage before you step into your your Vanessa self, your inspiring self. Tell me how you feel. What is it like for your for yourself? Um, I mean, it's always great to kind of 
like go to the event first of all and then when I'm going to speak there it's just like you're reaching out to a new audience isn't it so whether I have the speech completely prepared at the back of my hand or I don't really know and I'm just going to improvise when I go and kind of go with the flow type of thing either way I know that somebody in the audience could possibly benefit from what I'm saying and so I think kind of the atmosphere of going onto the stage and people not really knowing what they're about to hear and then afterwards kind of being able to actually interact with people I think is just fantastic so I think that was like the main the best thing about kind of going on stage um so I would probably say just like the atmosphere and just obviously getting to see what kind of impact there is when you're obviously at the event let alone kind of getting messages on social media like a couple of days after you or I've um, spoken on stage so what, what are your friends saying to you because they're seeing you speak they're seeing you out there what are your friends actually saying to you um if I'm talking about friends specifically not just any pupils um my friends kind of just like we always joke around about it and um, we can be in like a lesson and somebody like steals my pen and I'm like give me back my highlighter give me back my pen because you didn't ask me you didn't give me permission just anything that a normal teenager would say I don't know if it's normal but either way <laughs> um and then when my friends would be like oh that's not very inspiring Vanessa so in a way it's just kind of like a joke now um but unless people kind of use it against me kind of using my own words against me like oh you're meant to be positive give me some inspiring words when I'm literally <laughs> doing my when I'm doing my own business or I'm in the cafeteria and somebody comes up to me that I've never spoken to before and they're like, oh, can I have a shout out because we're best friends? And I'm like, oh, I do not remember, I do not recall speaking to you before. So I guess it's kind of like a mixed version of reactions and responses to what I do. And honestly, that is completely understandable. Right. Um, I expect that just because nobody is obviously, not everyone grows up in a household. Like my mum is a massive kind of advocate for positive thinking and kind of well-being and things like that so I think if not everybody's obviously brought up in that type of household then they're not going to understand what I do I can't really change anything about that but otherwise my friends have always been very supportive I mean I think I've had a couple of my friends like be um in one of my like YouTube videos before or, like my vlogs so if they're allowed to be on YouTube then of course I'll be vlogging with them just because of that fun energy it's still showing me as a teenager and not as this motivational speaker or this 13 year old who has a job or has a very planned out future kind of thing but otherwise yeah. it's all been great support so far from the people that I keep close to me that, that's a, that's a, that's amazing so today guys we're speaking about how to stay positive in uncertain times and certainly we've seen a, a, a lot of um, things happen across the world a lot of um, a lot of riots a lot of protesting people it's uncertain. It's uncertain. And, for, and, and so we have to find a way to stay positive. Now, Vanessa, with all the speaking you've done, what can you say people can do to stay positive? Um, kind of going off what you were saying as well, uh, everything that's going on in the world, like to do with the Black Lives Matter movement, or it could simply be just like the COVID-19 pandemic. <laughs> I feel like so many things have just kind of been popping up throughout 2020. People are literally starting to lose hope. We shouldn't lose hope, but um, I feel like 2020 hasn't obviously been what everybody envisioned it to be like. But especially trying to stay positive, like the worst thing I can probably say to you is just be happy and wake up and just kind of put a smile on your face and you'll feel better. And that's like the most like cliche thing to say, I feel like. But the main ways I've been trying to stay positive is literally using your time wisely. Now, my mom is probably going to be staring at me because she knows I'm not the best person with time. Um, but using your time wisely is kind of like um, realizing that you have this time and kind of using it to work on yourself and to be productive or to start working towards your dreams. So I feel like the main way to stay positive or the main way for me personally has been to kind of stay focused and focus on myself so in the mornings if I'm waking up like one hour after my alarm clock but when I when I'm um, waking up in the mornings it's like okay I'm gonna get ready today so that I make myself feel better then in the evening I'm gonna do like a face mask or focus on my skin because that makes me feel better so just kind of doing those things step by step to like work on your self-love that self-worth that self-appreciation 
and that self gratitude because the more we start to accept our flaws rather than like correct them and fix them the more like these negative views of ourselves are literally going to disappear because using this time in lockdown or just the time that you can see in the world especially on social media everything my TikTok, my Instagram has been literally filled with Black Lives Matter protests or um, victims who have lost their lives to police brutality. So I think the main way to kind of keep positive, if you do need a break of social media, take a break of social media because it can be extremely overwhelming yeah. sometimes. And your That's mental true. health is definitely really important. And it's been like all of our mental health have been challenged during um, this year, basically. And it's understandable for your mental health to be affected or to have consequences or for it just to be not in the right place so right. I think just trying to accept that trying to work on yourself more often as we were so busy beforehand um yeah just trying to focus on yourself because the minute you start focusing on yourself I feel like things will really start to change and then you can start working towards other things so when you say work on your work on yourself what do you mean by work on yourself what do you do to work on yourself um what i do yeah to work on yourself um what i do i mean i love to relax um even though it can be extremely hard working at different times of course it can be very overwhelming so if i've had a really busy day or a really busy week on the weekends i probably won't do anything like i literally just watch netflix i watch my tv shows i watch my movies i'll relax with my mum. i do face masks or something to do with skincare or just like something that's going to allow me to kind of clear my mind because if my brain is constantly working, I'm eventually going to break down and that means you're going to burn out. And I do not need that True. to happen because in a way, I kind of put my own responsibility on myself. It's not the best thing to do, but um, for me, I'm like, if I ever feel bad, I need to keep on going so that somebody else who is having a bad day I'm the person that they're going to look to. So in a way, I need to keep going for them, even though they probably don't know who I am yet. So I think just kind of to see that perspective and that future and to see how I could be impacting that person. So for me yeah. to kind of keep on going, I can't really be burning out because I'm doing social media to kind of give people a voice or to share their journeys and be and help people become more uplifted during this time. And for me to kind of see that is gonna make me feel uplifted. So someone's like, you give out, you receive back in return. Yes, wow, that's amazing. Now, <laughs> I, had a look, I, had, I had a look I had a look at your social media, your Instagram account, and I was blown away with your Instagram account. I'm thinking, Thank wow, you. wait. <laughs> let, me just, let me just throw up one of your quotes from your Instagram account, which I thought was really inspiring. Let me just <laughs> why do you think it's important for people to speak up and use a voice why do i think it's important for people to speak up and have a voice i mean it feels like we've been extremely silent for extremely long um, it's been almost 52 years um, since the Civil Rights Act was passed, and that, I believe, is specifically in the USA. And obviously, I am from London, so um, me kind of being in that environment in the US, obviously, I would never be able to relate to that, but there is still brutality and racism everywhere around the world. You can't really just compare your country to somebody else's and make it seem like it's better when, obviously, it's not. Um, but yeah. I feel like people have been very quiet for so long and people are really focusing now because you get to see people's true colours. I mean, I've seen a bunch of different creators, the minute they post about their thoughts on the Black Lives Matter movement or how, they, how they're dealing with like COVID-19 or whatever it is, um, they're losing followers from it, they're losing friends from it, but you really do get to see people's true colours because if you do not support what I believe in, then there's no point of view following my content or acting like we're best friends if we know that we're completely different or we have like the complete opposite views so I mean the people who have passed because of racism and because of ignorant racists like I, I would like to say um the people who have passed the people will not be able to see the change that we're going to create as a new revolution or this decade no. they won't be yeah. able to see that change maybe they'll see it from above us and they'll be able to smile when they see that yeah. racism has finally been gone but 
right now physically they will not be able to see the change that's going to happen their family members will not be able to see them stand by them when this change is happening and occurring so for us to still be alive and present in this very moment when this is happening that means something that wow. means something the minute you wake up in the morning sometimes I take it for advantage a lot because I just wake up and want to go back to sleep but the minute that you wake up in the morning you've been granted a brand new day for you to kind of still be able to walk still be able to eat still be able to breathe properly is saying something so if you have your voice use it because the people who have been oppressed the people who have lost their lives due to racism or discrimination of any sort whether that be because of their sexual orientation their religious beliefs whatever it is or just because of the color of their skin you are still alive you may have a privilege you may not but you are still here so i think that says something and that you should be the person to use the voice use your voice to kind of say something and the more people the more individuals speak up about it because it starts with everyone it starts with you if you're watching this video it starts with every single individual because the minute you start calling out somebody if they're being racist or if they're trying to entertain somebody's death that's when the change is going to start um, happening because you need to stand up for the people who have passed because that's what they deserve. They deserve their justice. So I think wow. just using your voice is really important. Um, I mean, yeah. I'm a massive advocate for it. I have a, a bunch of different opinions about what's kind of happening yeah. at this current situation, but I really yeah. feel like you kind of have a responsibility to use your voice because the people who have passed from it or the people who have been discriminated, they don't have a voice anymore, but you that's still true. do, that's so you true. should that's your responsibility to kind of use your voice for them in, in their name. Wow. Okay, on that note, we're gonna take a break. We're gonna to go to our sponsor. When we come back, we're gonna have, we're gonna have a, some comments from like, some of the people making comments outside in Facebook and YouTube. You are listening to The Message Talk Show and Podcast. Do you believe you have something to share? Do you believe you have something to contribute? Do you have a story? to tell the world to share with your community. Gandhi said, man often becomes what he believes himself to be. If you think you can, you can. If you think you can't, you can't. So join us on the Message Talk Show and Podcast with host Alex Gordon. So let's go to some of the comments that people have been, wow, comments that have been streaming through. <laughs> excellent. Michael Earl said, "Is that that's excellent. Michael again saying, yes, we must speak up. Man, you've got some fans here, man. Yes, yes, don't, don't put, don't speak up, must speak up, speak up. It, it's so important for us to use our voice and, 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 and to use the opportunity, the opportunity to speak, the opportunity to, to, um, to, to make something happen. Now, one of the things I discovered recently, or <laughs> yesterday, was that you went on a Kenya trip. You, you yeah. went on a trip to Kenya, impacting some young people in Kenya. Tell us about that. Um, so we were supporting this charity called H Giving. They have an orphanage in Kenya. Um, and we went there for 10 days. And I think I was the youngest volunteer that ever went out there. Um, I think I was 10, was I 10? I think I was 10 years old when we went to Kenya. Um, and for me to kind of see that they were still happy, not having a lot of things, or they have, yeah, they don't have that many things, or they don't have like as much, I don't really know what the words to say it is, but it was so kind of new for me to see that they still put a smile on their faces when they wow. didn't have anything. And we're here in, any country, whether you're logging in from this or whether you're watching it on replay, wherever you are, um, you still have everything and still we find things to moan about or still we have things to kind of critique about when these kids literally could be playing sports with like a broken football or something and then we're here living in these homes that obviously we don't think are luxury but for them it is luxurious and it is something that they really want to have. So I think for me going to that 
going on that trip was a whole new kind of world for me to kind of see see that and also interact with them as well um being able to interact and kind of motivate more kids um around the world i think was an amazing experience and opportunity so i will never that'll never be a moment i'll forget um, kind of seeing all the kids there and be able to speak to them properly and be able to kind of hear about what they think of what their lives are like or whatever it is to kind of make that genuine conversation. But I think it was just really powerful and impactful. Um, I think for everybody, all the volunteers who went with us um, on that year to kind of see how the kids um, felt about how, this, how, they live it, how they were living compared to how we live. So I think it's just kind of like the message I got from it was to not take it um, as much advantage, um, yeah. don't take everything for granted, basically. That's true. That, that is so true because living in this country, you take for granted everything that you have around you and, you know, you want more. I want this. I want that. I want the latest watch. I want the latest gadget. I want the latest that. And thousands of miles away, there's other kids out there who have – who just about have water to drink, just about have a, a slice of bread to eat. And, 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 and they don't have half of what we have and we're not appreciative. So that, that, was the must, that must have been an amazing trip for you and your friends that, that went on that trip. You learned really was, yeah. yeah. Now the other thing I learned about you and, and, and what you said was is that you're like a planner. You love planning. You love <laughs> organizing yourself. So where does that planning skill come from? My mum. <laughs> Stay away. My mum, definitely. At some point in the day, that is going to come from somewhere. So behind every young person, behind every young person, there is a, a, a tower of strength, yeah? And that tower of strength is who? Their parents. Their parents, well, and in particular, you, you talk about your mum a lot. So bring your mum on. Just jump her into the show and let's Come see. On, what you're it's time for your debut. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the powerhouse. Hi, Alex. <laughs> behind this young lady. My, you know, you've done such a great job. You have done such a great job to instill the values, motivate this young lady to pick up this challenge and start from the age of nine years of age, speaking, pushing herself, nervous, but just doing it anyway. Do you know that there's many adults out there who will not step on stage? Yeah, I know, <laughs> including me. <laughs> including me, I, I, you know, like I can talk to anybody, but put me on the stage, I'll freeze. I can't speak. <laughs> <laughs> you can, but how did you? What made you instill such strong values in your daughter to get her, get her to get her out there, developing herself on stage, developing herself to push herself even more than her colleagues at school? What I mean, triggered be, that you? Yeah, I mean to be honest, like I was quite skeptical as well, and especially like about social media and like even now the young people when they're saying like, oh my god, nine year old, two year old they influencers, they models, they on social media, but they need to understand that the parents are behind it or the parents are running the social media. It's not the two year old that posting pictures and interacting with people. With people. Um, and then the same like with Vanessa when she was nine and when she asked me, so I kind of did my research and asked a few people who had that experience to basically put that parent to guidance there, uh, you know, into place. And uh, yeah, and then she just, she just started and because she wanted to do it I wasn't stopping her because it's not something like you know want to be famous mummy or want to be famous child which a lot of people probably have that you know um what is it called like they mentality. assume mentality yeah and, and they assume that I might be like that but if they actually know me or they know or we've been friends for a long time and they know Vanessa behind the scenes and they know me behind the scenes they obviously know that it, whatever I say to Vanessa, even to get out of bed in lockdown, is that if she doesn't want to do something and that, you know, she won't do it. So it's the same thing, like when she was little, like I want to do X, Y, Z. And if I was actually telling her, like, you need to say this, you need to say that, you know, 
you would see that the child is really staged and structured and but with her it when she went on, when she goes on the stage even now i don't even know what she's going to say like she's wow. preparing for another video or, and her blog and i said well read that brief for me she's like no no, no, no. you will see it with everybody else but so I have no influence. No, I'll, I'll, show, I'll show it to you before I upload it on yeah, YouTube. Yeah, I mean, still. you know, we still need to have that kind of guidance yeah. there. But when she goes on the speech and she prefer, prepares her speech, um, I, I'm first one as the audience is listening to her speech. So I don't tell her, you need to say this, you need to say that, because it will be really structured. And when you see even adult speakers, when they write down yes, word by true. word, yes, you will it's feel you can't, they don't speak from their heart and you yeah. can see it is really structured and it's like robotic almost you know so it's people can't relate to them so you know vanessa since she was little obviously found her calling i would say wow uh, she Whoa. was just natural and you know even when she comes off the stage she's like do you actually know what you just done what you just said <laughs> she's like, i have no idea and then she will watch wow. it maybe back, you know, what she performed. So it's almost like a hypnotic state. You know, when people are hypnotized, or like you end up doing something and then you forget what or how did, like, how did I get here? And you just kind of don't really realize it. I think that's what happens on stage when I'm you step speaking. into a state. Then I get off and I'm like, oh. You, you step into your Let me watch that back for a second. Yeah. 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 But that, that, that's amazing. So, so your, pro, your mum. Your production assistant, your production manager, your editor, your photographer. To to what do you not perform? Vid videographer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everything, everything. Because Vanessa doesn't have any management, so it's just two of us. You know, is a two two men two men team, <laughs> two girls this team. Was, this journey must must have stretched you as well. It must have stretched yeah. you because. You were going somewhere that you hadn't taken anyone before, but definitely. it must have stretched you. How was that for you? No, I mean, de definitely. I mean, because like Vanessa mentioned, I have started kind of my own personal development journey and looking into creating a business or be going into network marketing and, you know, affiliate marketing and all of these things. So I kind of had that journey. And then being a single mom, she was always coming with me to meetings, to seminars, you know, listening to my positive book thinking, you know, and, and things like that. So if someone told us five years ago, we're going to be doing what we're doing now, you know, no. I wouldn't believe them. I'll be really skeptical, really negative, you know, so we really changed our lives around. So, and then I think a lot of people were saying, um, even commenting enough, I think I've commented on that as well, that speaking up your truth, I think Vanessa said it, that people are unfollowing you, people are, you know, unfriending you and stuff. And we see a lot of things and a lot of celebrities um, sharing that on social media. Like if I want to say what I want to say, if I'm sharing positive message and you don't like it, that surely is something wrong with you. But right. don't take it out on me. I'm not the bad person. So if you don't like it and you unfollow me, it's not because I said something nice. It's just because of you need to work on yourself. Yeah. Well, so, yeah. Anyway, everybody's not your audience. You've got to realize that. Yeah. So by virtue of you speaking your truth and speaking what you have to say, then if they unfollow, fine. Next. Just press the next button. That's next. amazing. So. Exactly. Where do you guys see the next five years from now? What's in the horizon? Ooh. <laughs> well, it's not officially announced yet. Shall we, shall we tell them? Shall we tell them? I know we, we are live on YouTube and Facebook, it? but we said we're going to well, announce gonna it around 12 o'clock. So oh, it's obviously a different audience to, to our Facebook and Instagram and so stuff. So fine. we're going to post it more. <laughs> but uh, we've got an exciting announcement that Vanessa wanted to... Um, be a well, obviously she's a presenter and a host and she wanted to have her own tv show so when the opportunity doesn't come to you you need to create it right her so, own her own tv show say that again you just show. oh my god hey let's do a drum roll for let's do a drum roll <laughs> let's do a drum roll first for that hey drum roll coming it's coming you no, have it's, it's own a, TV show. Hey. It's actually already here. We filmed the first three episodes beginning of this year uh, before lockdown, and it's been aired now on Amazon I'm really, Prime. Um, okay, so if if I mean you, you, you don't you don't have to share anything if you don't want it to share anything more about this, you know. But what's <laughs> the essence of the show? 
If you want to share it, you're fine. If you know, but if you don't want to, yeah, but you know, yeah, you know, give us that. What's the essence of the show? The essence of the show, or I think like the message that we're trying to share behind it. I mean, I think for different like TV shows that I've like, we don't even watch television that much. Um, right. Probably, like for maybe Britain's Got Talent, X Factor, or Love Island. I thought the only time I watched <laughs> national television. Otherwise, <laughs> it's like YouTube or Netflix. That's it for the year. Um, but when I would ever be watching television shows or interviews, I never really found something that would really excite me because maybe it's just because they weren't really talking about something that was kind of relevant among right. some people. Okay. So I feel like the main message or the trying like the aspect, or as you said yourself, the essence of what the show is meant to be about. Um, it's kind of like trying to use these people that I'm interviewing, their journeys, share their journeys, but then also see and kind of understand their views of relevant things that are happening in the world. I think one of the interviews that we have up on the show right now um, is with Adam, mm -hmm. Adam, um, and he was talking about, or oh, I asked him a, a question a little bit about the youth um, amongst like knife crime and things like that, because mm. that is quite predominant in the UK. So yeah. kind of hearing about their different perspectives on different things. I mean, that's why I love to interview people. I love to hear their views on things and not just, what's this about you? What do you think of me? Or what do you think of this mm. person? It's not really yeah. about gossip. It's not really about what's the latest thing happening right now it's more about what is your view on this topic or this thing that's occurring and what can we do to kind of put forward to that or what can we do to help that so I think that's the main part of it and to still make wow. that exciting and inspiration wow. for young people to still be a platform somewhere obviously taught um hosted by myself me as a teenager I kind of know what young people like because I am a young person. Yeah. So I think it's <laughs> just true. to see how that will help young audiences and build their confidence and inspire Man. them. Really. I'm excited. That sounds so <laughs> exciting. That's <sounds laughs> amazing. Man, we're gonna we're definitely gonna tune into that show. On head, head, out, head out to Amazon now and go and watch it. <laughs> yeah, wonderful. So guys. It's been great having you on the show today and hearing all the things that you're doing and, and all the things that you're up to. What's the Thanks. one thing that you'd like to share with the rest of the world today? What's the one thing you'd like to... And let me ask Vanessa first and then I come to the mum, yeah? So, <laughs> Vanessa, what's the one thing that you'd like to share with the world? What's the one thing that you'd like to say today? To share the world? Hey, we're talking, we're talking to 7.4 billion people across the world on Facebook, yeah? On YouTube. So, we're talking to everybody. So, what's... Okay. What would you like to say to the youngsters today? Um, focus on your mental health. It's extremely important. Um, I'm only saying that even though there are like a billion different things I could talk about or remind people of, but specifically I would say amongst young people, learn to understand how your mental health functions and how it works. And um, because even amongst adults, not just, it doesn't really have to be young people specifically, um, but your mental health can be challenged in any situation. And for anyone, any person, any individual, their feelings and their thoughts can be so overpowering and overwhelming that you need to learn to understand how it works and learn how to cope with it, most importantly. Um, but yeah, your mental health is extremely important. Never take it for granted. Never brush it off your shoulders because it genuinely is the most important thing that you should be focusing on, especially in lockdown or especially um, during everything that's happening in the world. And yeah, I mean, we live in the day and age of social media. Yeah. Our generation specifically, we're going to be growing. We're going to be growing up, or we grew. We are growing up right now. Um, in a world that's kind of full of technology and at the same time full of a lot of discrimination, a lot of violence as well. So I think to kind of learn to stop compar comparing ourselves to people online because that's one of the main like factors that plummets our self-esteem or self-love. So mental health is extremely important. Focus on it, especially now in lockdown because now you have the time to. Wow. 
Wow, that, that's so powerful. That's that's the I, I said one word, one sentence, and that was like that oh, was sorry. Like, sorry, there's a whole paragraph. I can talk half an hour. I can't talk that. <laughs> yes, hey, come well, on, what would you like to say? Is there is there something you'd like to say to the adults out there? What would you like to say? I think yeah, I think to the parents. I mean, even who, who are you know, those who are not parents, you know, if if you are a parent, especially if you have a teenager, you know, like Vanessa is you know, always uh, advocate for mental health and you know going through struggles as well so it's it's good to share and then as well like if we didn't have the relationship that we have you know and that she was struggling and wasn't able to talk to me um you know we god knows what would happen you know so um for the parents out there please talk to your children or let your child explain what they're going through because you never know what they're going through. You know your child and you know when they start acting up, there is something not quite right. And I know even on Vanessa, when she gets up in the morning and she feels a little bit not sure, I was like, are you okay? What's going on? And then it takes her maybe a while sometimes to explain, but I will persevere and I will tell, I will ask, keep asking her like, what's going on? You need to tell me, you need to share. You can't bottle it up inside because that's gonna hurt you more. Wow. Oh, That's just to nice. add to that as well. <laughs> um, just to add to that as well. Add to that. Okay, go on. What um, my mum said, um, there's a very big difference, like, especially if a child comes out to you and kind of says, this is how I feel. What am I supposed to do to kind of help that? There's a, like, you can be, you can be, you can hear them, but you may not be actually listening to what they're saying. Right. Um, I think that's a very like big difference, a, a very like fine line between the two of those things. So just make sure you're there to understand what they're saying. Right. Don't brush like, oh, but it's just a phase. Oh, you need to start being more positive then. Or oh, you're just feeling sad. It will it will go over soon because that's probably the worst thing you can say to a teenager if they're dealing with some kind of mental health issue and that's the first thing you're going to say to them, then next time they want to speak to somebody, they're not going to come to you because they know the way you're going to react towards them. So wow. make sure you listen to them and not just hear them. That's what I wanted to add. Otherwise, I'm finished. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, thank you so much for joining the show today. It's been a pleasure having you on the show. Thank Vanessa, you. You're amazing. Mum, you're amazing. And thank you. examples of how we should be working with our young people, working with young people just to, Un to uncover the potential that they have, uncover what's inside of them while we're on our own journey as well. Am I right, mum? You're on your own journey, but yes, yeah. you're facilitating your, your youngster's journey. That's amazing. So we're gonna round up the show now and thank you all for listening to us today. Today, we, we talked about focusing on your mental health. We talked about talking to your young people, talking to your youngsters and Vanessa said, actively listening to them. We also talked about working on yourself, talk about taking adequate rest appreciate your opportunities. Sometimes what we have around us, we take for granted and we don't appreciate it. So appreciate what we have around us and see it as an opportunity. Interact with people more to help people. Listen to other people to help them. And last of all, what Vanessa was really strong about, speak up and use your voice. Speak up and use your voice. It's your right to speak up. It's your right to be heard. Speak up and use your voice. Now we're going to go to our sponsor and then we're going to end the show. Ladies, thank you so much, but don't run thank away. You. Thank you. These buttons sometimes just get me. <laughs> you are listening to the Message Talk Show and Podcast. Do you believe you have something to share? Do you believe you have something to contribute? Do you have a story? to tell the world to share with your community Gandhi said man often becomes what he believes himself to be if you think you can you can if you think you can't you can't so join us on the message talk show and podcast with host Alex Gordon today thank you for participating in the show thank you for being part of what we're doing today and just go out there speak up hold your own on stage be Vanessa's a typical example of what you should be like. Even if you can't speak like Vanessa, just open your mouth and speak. Open your mouth and share your story and get out there. Thank you for joining us and see you again on Thursday, 11 o'clock.